Different versions of the DREAM Act have been contemplated in the legislature for more than a decade. The DREAM Act would create a path to legal immigration status for undocumented immigrants born outside the United States who were brought here illegally as children. Unfortunately, the bill failed to reach the required 60 votes in the Senate. On June 15, 2012, President Barack Obama announced that his administration would stop deporting young illegal aliens who matched certain criteria previously proposed under the DREAM Act. This would be known as the Deferred Act. On August 15, 2012, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services began accepting applications for the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. My dad and I are both from Alamo, Sonora. So my dad came in legally with a work permit. So he overstayed his work permit, his visa. My mom came in, as many say, illegally. And I came in with her. And I came in when I was seven months old. This is the first time she tried to come in. She, we went through a coyote. And she actually drugged me with cough syrup so I wouldn't cry. Because they kill the babies out there if you start crying. So because it tells the babies, like, if it's, you hear the babies cry in the middle of the desert, middle of nowhere, somebody's gonna eventually hear it and they're gonna come and get you. The second time around, I came in with my aunt and uncle as their own baby, so no one asked any questions. My mom came in through a coyote again. So then we reunited with my dad. For 23 years, I was living in fear when I'm driving. Oh, when am I gonna get pulled over? Am I gonna get a ticket? Am I gonna get deported? Always that fear that you don't know what's gonna happen. So you every day you have to live with some caution in your life. I was one of those undocumented students that my parents were like, don't worry, don't go and, go and get a job because of fear of me I, like getting caught with a fake social. So my parents were like, don't try to look for it. Don't, look, don't try to get yourself into trouble. So I'm like, don't worry about trying to find a job, but entertain yourself with other things to do. I felt like sometimes so useless and I'm like, I want to help you, I want to help you, but I, you're telling me I can't, you're telling me no. And I'm, again, I'm one of those people, don't tell me no, I'll do, I'll do the opposite. But when it came to this, my parents were like, no, because if something happens, it's not just going to fall on you, it's going to fall on us as well. So it was the biggest fear that they would just group us together and send us out of this country. So my sister would be left here by herself. So I followed their instinct, even though things the one time I'm like, I'll listen to what they say and follow it because it's true. You never know what would happen. When the economy went bad, I like literally was like, oh my gosh, what happened? Are we gonna be struggling? Like every, I saw people like, parents got fired off their work. My friends were struggling with their own jobs and having to pay school. Some even dropped out of school. So it was always that biggest fear, like what happens? And I was like, I'll work, I'll work. And my parents just kept saying, no, no, don't get yourself into trouble. And I followed that instinct. <laughs> you struggle sometimes, like my parents would be like, hey, can you be a part-time instead of a full-time? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. If it works for you both, then I'll take classes off my schedule so I could be a part-time. I qualify for Deferred Action, so I received my work permit in April. Once Deferred Action came through, I was like, yes, I get to get a work permit, I get a social, I get a driver's license, all of this, something that I've never had all the, all the years I've been alive, so it's something, it's amazing. <laughs> well, I completed my first degree. My first degree is in political science at UNLV, and I'm about to finish the second degree in English. So basically from there, I want to go to law school. Like law school was the biggest hope. And now with deferred action, I'm able to work, save money. I'll be able to pay my own schooling this time. And I think that's one of the biggest goals as, as of now, just working to get to be, go to law school so I can study human and civil rights. And then hopefully in the future, become a lawyer in that field and help everybody in the future. Just being able to work in the, in the government because that's what my biggest goal was too, is working for the government and changing stuff up. <laughs> Push for stuff that's gonna help our community, help my friends, help my family members. So it's kind of branched out. <laughs> if I didn't have this, and I think 
a lot of opportunities would have passed by me. Like, because I'd be like, oh, I'm one of the privileged, privileged ones. I'm able to do, I'm able to go to school, I'm able to drive, I'm able to apply for a job. And I think this opportunity literally like changed everything and it made me appreciate even more what I have and what I've accomplished because without it, I feel like I would be really, I'd be just one of the crowd. Like I wouldn't understand the struggle. It's been definitely worth it. Like I would have not met the people I've met if it wasn't for getting doing internships, volunteering and stuff like that, I would have never thought I'd be able to see the things I've seen, meet the people I've met, and now with deferred action, be able to like, when people offer a job offer, I'm like, oh, let me think about it now. And I'm able to decide whether or not I want it. So that's like one of the biggest joys. It's completely worth it now. And because thinking about it, thinking of like back about it, if I had applied for another job, uh, applied a job with a fake social, what would have happened to me? Unf like fortunately, I was, my parents were able to still maintain our lives, our household and everything with the money they are earning. But I see other friends who like had to get fake socials to work and they've been working since they graduated high school. And I see them struggling, but now with deferred action, they, I was like, did you quit your job? They're like, yes. And I'm like, okay, move on to something bigger. You're bigger than that. So I think it's completely worth it now just to wait. All immigration stuff, you know, there, there are tons of immigrants out there that, you know, that are, are, that are other than Spanish or Hispanic, so not just Hispanics and, you know, and Spanish people, it's, it's, you know, there's Asians out there, there's Russians, there's like, you know, there's tons of us out there that, that are multiple races, so. This country was founded by immigrants and now it's like, you know, pushing away immigrants. That's not right. You know, it's the whole pursuit of happiness. Originally, it was uh, my mom and my dad were living here. And then it's a funny story because uh, I was supposed to be born within a month. Um, like, like, say like today, um, like a month later, I was supposed to be born, but my mom and my dad, they decided to go back to Indonesia, which is a funny thing because my dad convinced my mom. And then, so they went back to Indonesia and I was born over there. And then um, my, like when I was about one years old, one and a half years old, my parents got a divorce. Uh, and then at the age of like four and a half, five, um, my mom decided to come back here. You know, not being able to drive, so we always had to take the bus and whatnot. And then um, also finding a job, of course, you know, not being able to get a, a work permit. So we had to, uh, well, my mom had to find a job anywhere she could really. Um, she, back in the day, she did a lot of like, uh, like room service, like she was, she was a maid. I started looking for jobs. I applied to different places. Um, you know, it was very hard. I didn't get a lot of callback. You know, just being afraid of, uh, you know, something happening, um, of something happening and, you know, like something, if I get fired or my mom gets fired, like where are we gonna get our funds from? When I was in high school, you know, I thought I wasn't going to be able to go to college because the whole uh, money issues and stuff like that. There's a lot of times where I talked to my mom and I was like, you know, why don't we just go back to Indonesia? Like, you know, it, it hurt me, like, seeing my mom suffer, seeing my mom stress and stuff like that. And it kind of made me feel like, you know, is this really worth it? You know, um, I was like, because in Indonesia we have tons of family, you know, my, my family back there has businesses and stuff. And I was like, you know, why are we here, you know, like struggling when we can go back to Indonesia and not struggle? But, uh, you know, it's just that American dream. It's just, you know, wanting more in life and just, you know, pushing yourself to the limit. And then, so that's what my mom wanted for me. And, you know, that's what I wanted for myself. So that's why we kept pushing. My close friends and stuff like that, um, no, because they've been, you know, they've been motivating me to do it, do it. They told me like since day one, like you know, once that, once it gets approved, go for it, you know. And then the only thing that that I didn't do it on day one is because the money issue. So you know, I had to save up for the money, and it took me about like two months, and then I finally did it. Deferred action. I applied it uh, about back in November. Oh man, like I started crying. Um, I started crying, I felt like, you know, finally, because, you know, applying for it, a lot of people were excited for me, but I was always the type of person, like, I don't believe it until it's in my hands. Now with the different action, you know, getting a work permit and being able to drive, it, it kind of lets me move on with my life. Just 
just the whole idea of a step closer, you know, a step closer to being a citizenship. It's a step closer of belonging. This changed a lot. I'm not afraid anymore, you know, I'm not afraid of what if, what if I lose a job, you know, I can find another job now with a work permit and stuff like that. So it's, you know, it, it's made me a lot bolder, it made me a lot brave, it makes me want to pursue more in life. So currently, like, I am pursuing other opportunities, like in the career field and, you know, um, and just being able to drive is just, you know, it, it's like that's my big thing like I wanted to drive a permit does definitely help you know getting a drive license does really help but you know mentally getting that deferred action approved is one step closer to something they've been chasing for the you know for their whole life so this is good for us we can't be afraid because you know how, how can you be afraid of something that can better yourself you know it's like life you're never gonna get anything until you risk something you know you have to do something for to get something that you never had You know, I'm majoring in marketing and finance. What I want to do is I want to be head of a marketing team one day, and then because um, that's what I love doing, I love selling and all that stuff. I believe the American dream is, is the freedom of being anybody you want to be. You know, having the right to pursue your happiness. You know, that's the pursuit of happiness and all that. And you know, to me, that's the American dream. You know, it's not being rich or anything like that. It's just the right to chase your dream. Definitely, uh, definitely. You know. Um, when you look back at like the stuff, uh, you know, back in Indonesia or like in other countries, you know, um, over here in America, it's it's awesome. You know, a lot of people don't don't appreciate it because they've never lived in another country. They don't know how it feels like, to, you know, to to live in a place where you don't really have all the rights here and whatnot. You know, so it, it's definitely worth it.